how, how many people in here have, know somebody who's been in jail or know somebody who's been charged, arrested, convicted, or had the police come by? Show of hands. Look, look around. Everybody. It's, it's almost everybody, right? Everybody. Just about everybody. Um, that means that this information touches all of you guys. It has already. You might not have known it, but we're going to explain a lot of things to help sort of take the veil and the mystery out of sort of that question about why such and such as mom is, is, you know, had the kids taken away for a couple of weeks or why their dad's been gone for two years or why your cousin, and he was just hanging around with these guys. You didn't know he, he never sold drugs, but now he's doing five or ten years. We're going to talk about all of that stuff um, to help you kind of navigate yourselves on, in addition to the information you get within the classroom with math and science and reading, we're going to teach you about criminal law. It's because the, the criminal justice system, the prison system, um, it's, really, it's really about big business. Prison is big business. You understand? You think prisons just happen? You know, I think prisons is just some free, it's just, it's free, it's place people like locking people up or, it's business. And, I mean, there are big time business guys who invest large amounts of money. The people, not Bill Gates, but guys that run in his circles. Bill Gates, big money. They'll take money they've made in other industries and put it into building a prison in, this, in your state. And they do that because they know how to make money. And they know how to make money by investing in, business, in prisons because they know people will be coming into those prisons over and over and over again. They make money by getting a body in there. You know, anybody understand how hotels work? How do hotels make money? Check in, people staying overnight. They make more money if they stay two nights, maybe a week, right? And the more people who stay, right, the better, right? Because no right. hotel ever wants to have it where, you know, only 25% of the rooms are occupied, right? They want to have the more people, the more money. Y'all know this anyway, right? The more people, more money, right? Okay, so the thing about prisons, you got to kind of open your mind a little, back, a little bit and think about that. What do prisons do? They house people, right? That's really what it is, right? As a matter of fact, you know there's a name they call prisons. They call it the big house. Ex exactly, see? Think about it, the big house. So that, that's what they do, right? And they, and they want to make money doing that. So there's a force out there that's based on money, big business, big money people, powerful people. There's a force out there that's working to put bodies in prison. Now, where y'all think they're going to get those people? Somebody where? Said, somebody said off the streets. The hood, the ghetto. Oh, and just, just one quick point, too. There's an added benefit. In addition to getting money by having bodies in beds, you know when you go to jail, Slavery, slavery ain't dead. Y'all, did y'all learn that? The slavery was ended, it was abolished? How much did y'all read about that though? Cause you know slavery's not, it's not illegal. It's, it's one place where slavery's legal. In prisons. That's right, jail 13th prison. Amendment. That's right. This is in the constitution, the highest law of the land. If you have somebody, you can put somebody in voluntary servitude if it's for punishment for penalty of a crime. You can be poor, but if you educate yourself, you can still avoid being one of those bodies in the beds. And that's the goal. We all, that all makes sense, everybody? We want to avoid being a body in the bed? All right. So, the uneducated. We're here to try to help you fix that. We're here as teachers and educators. We're lawyers by day, and that's what we do. We charge other folks $800 an hour, $400 an hour for services. But we're here on our time to help you guys out as teachers and educators. Just so want to make sure you don't have to go somewhere and pay that. Guilt by association. Quick. Asking somebody to commit a crime, that's a crime. I know, right? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Even if you don't do anything yourself, you don't, gotta, you don't have to go show up. You don't have to steal what it is. You don't have to break in nowhere. You don't have to start the, the fight. If you ask somebody to do anything that's criminal, It's the, particularly, it's the solicitation of a crime. It's called, yeah, there's a name for it. It's called solicitation. When you ask someone to commit a crime, it's called solicitation. And, and, and to give you an idea, asking for the hookup. Now, everybody knows what the hookup is, right? You know, you go in the, you got a friend that works at, do people, people still work at fast yeah, food say, places? Yeah. 
okay, yeah, you got a friend that works at Wendy's, and it's yeah. like, hey, man, throw You're extra like, fry in the bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, okay, see, exactly, see, so, and here's, and here's why. Here's why, think about it. When you ask somebody to hook, hook you up, what are you actually asking them to do? That's, that's, that's exactly right. what it is. That's exactly what it is. You ask, you're asking them to steal for you, right? And stealing is a crime. So that's why you will get in trouble for that. Now, here's the thing. Let's be honest. Most times when you're in the store, you're at a restaurant, and you ask for the hookup, most times you're not going to get in trouble, right? This is what we always tell people. Just because you haven't got caught right. doesn't mean you won't get caught. And all it takes is one time, and that's it, right? Because the thing is, if, if, let's say, manager overhears, right, and you have a manager who's not cool, they didn't like you anyway, they didn't even want you really to get hired, they don't like you, and they're like, you know what, got you, right? There it is. So you have to be, you have to be mindful of that. Agreeing with somebody to commit a crime, and this one right here is, the, is one of the biggest ones. Agreeing with somebody to commit a crime is the crime of conspiracy. And conspiracy is, is, is the big bad joker, right? It's, it's tough. It's conspiracy is why probably 80% of the people you know uh, uh, that are in jail or been in trouble with the law is why they're in there. So let's say you, had, you, got, you have three kids, right? Teenagers, three of them, and they decide Hey, let's break into this house, you know, around 2 o'clock. No one's going to be home. We're going to just break in, take I know they got a flat screen over here right down the block. Go in there, kick the door in, run in, get it, and get out, right? Okay, so they all agree to meet up at 3 o'clock. Well, so they, they meet, or, sorry, 2 o'clock. So they meet up at that time at the place, at the house, right? They're outside. And one of the kids says, I can't do it. I can't do it. I wasn't brought up that way. My mom's would kill me if I found, she found out or whatever, right? So I'm not breaking in, I'm leaving, right? And the other two, all right, forget him then. He leaves, that kid leaves. So then what happens is the other two, they decide they're just gonna go ahead and go in. So what, once the kid's gone, the other kid's gone, they break in, boom, run in. But they thought nobody was home, somebody was home. Just so happens though, one of them, you know how that song, I brought, brought heat for situations like this, right? So somebody is home, and he ends up shooting the guy that's home. They run out, but they get caught. And when they get caught, the police, what do you think the police do? They usually separate them first. They separate them. Mm -hmm. And then they start asking them questions. And one of the questions they usually ask is, was there anybody else involved in this? Because if you tell me, well, you know, things will go easier on you. If you just tell me, just let, let, let me know. Right. Just let us know. That's right. <laughs> now, so what happens is they start thinking. Both of them start thinking because they separate. It's like, you know what? We did have a third guy. He did say he was part of this. He, he showed up with us, and then he just left. Right? So they go get the kid. Now, here's the thing. Let's say at the time that all this went down, the kid, he actually went home. His mom's was home. He right there with, with her. She's watching him while all the stuff is going down, right? They can still get him, right? They, go, they take him in. His mom says, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Why y'all taking him? His friends broke in, right? Now, we always ask this question. Who, are, who all are in trouble in that situation? Who are all the people that are in trouble? All three of them on the hook for everything that happened. The break in, the shooting, even the dude that was at home playing PlayStation with his mama. <laughs> yep, they all three, all three, if they, for, for the shooting, they all three on the hook for the shooting. That's how conspiracy works. Con they agreed, right? The crime itself was agreeing. So here's the other thing. You get in trouble for whatever anybody did to help move the crime along. When you said, okay, now, here's the thing. In some places where you live, if you say, OK, that's not quite enough. But if you show up, like well, how I said, he showed up, and then he left. If you showed up, you're on the hook. Like, you can't get off. There is a way to get out the hook. Y'all are not going to like the answer to it. But, but the thing is, you are, once you showed up, you're on the hook. Like, yeah. if one of your crazy friends who's trigger happy decide to just go crazy, even though you're not a killer, you're in trouble. You're in trouble for what he decided to do.